Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. This is 4F Beauty, and you are most welcome. Now, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, this is the continuation of our Three Continents, One Palette Challenge. I'm not quite sure why I said it like that. It, it's been a long day already, folks. <laughs> but this month, we are dealing with Strawberry Shake. Yeah, I... Puns. And, as always, the beautiful Nona and the beautiful Laura are accompanying me in this challenge. So, as I have said uh, for some considerable time, oft hear echoed elsewhere, on the most imaginative channels. But I'm backed up by Sammy the Sloth Straw. You want to find out exactly what this looks like? What the challenge is this time round? Which shades I've chosen? And what I'm going to blether on at you about this time? You're in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies. Welcome back from the intro. I would have shown you the outside of this on the intro. This is the Colourpop Strawberry Shake palette. And she looks like that. Uh, once again in our three continents or one palette series we have set ourselves a challenge of using two rows in the palette including diagonal so i went for the middle row and the diagonal it only gives me five colors not six but i really really wanted to use that shade and I really, really wanted to use that shade and this shade is too close to this shade for me to want to do that row. So that just kind of... Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the shades that I'm going to be using. So, my milkshake, take a sip, shake it up, paper straw and delish. Um... As always, this is a teaching channel, so I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. That's also because my chronic pain doesn't let me go any quicker than that. I also, for those with <clears throat> eyesight not quite as good as it used to be, I zoom right in tight so you just see my eyes. This does mean when I look down sometimes to add more pigment to a brush or change brushes or clean brushes, um, it does sometimes mean that you will see my hairline. However, small price to pay for you actually being able to see what I'm physically doing on my eyes. Um, I will be inserting a clip in just a moment where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. The way that eye makeup wears on them through the day is very similar, which is why so many people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids, follow the hooded lid tutorial and wonder why it doesn't work for them. So the little clip, the info clip I'm about to insert from when I still had acrylic nails on, so filmed way before the lockdowns and lager lurgy started will talk you through the differences between the two eyes, how to work out which you have and the workarounds and how to apply makeup on that particular eye type because it is different. 
once that is done I'll be back at the other end to pop some of these colour pigments onto my eyelid and yes I just poked myself in the eye with the end of the brush fantastic here's the clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with a floofy brush. It is clean, I've just cleaned it off on a, um, a clean washcloth. It just 
it's ready for its deep clean but we're halfway through the week so I clean my brushes on a Sunday but I'm starting with the floofy brush and I'm going to start off in paper straw quite a bit of kick up in that particular shade but it's fine I just tap off and pick that loose pigment up when I either need to build up pigment or continue with this eye it's fine uh, as usual I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is natural turns towards the nose fleck of when we get there and reverse turns to come back again hold the brush at the end to put as little pressure on my lid as possible and because this is a normal length brush basically brace the end of the brush against the palm of my hand which gives it a little bit more stability when you're using the brush particularly if you do struggle with your grip now I always start at the outside edge because if you do end up popping that wee bit too much pigment down it's a lot easier to deal with it when you know it isn't in the way and the reason I do circular movements like this the Venus walks rather than the old windshield wiper that you'll see younger beauty channels using is because I'm 46 years old I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. It's going to mile its moves. But then I know 20 year olds who've always been slim that have the same issue. So by doing it this way, we're very gently moving the skin around like this. So there's less chance of it folding over on itself and causing white lines because reverse the direction coming back so if it has folded over we've got a chance of catching it on the way back I also think this is less tuggy if you look how much that pulls on your eyes compared to this I think you, you're probably going to do less damage to your eyes in the long run See, that's what I mean about putting too much pigment down when your nose is in the way. Oh no, I've got to deal with that. Let's do a bit of a fleckle for a bit. And then just keep blending that out. Made the mistake of picking up more pigment and not tapping off on the back of my hand. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I really hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well, I hope it turns out to be as absolutely fabulous as you are, my darling. I like to do both eyes at the same time like this because um, your eyes are not symmetrical and because of allergies and with me fibro and everything sometimes my eyelids can be a bit puffier I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth so I can change colour uh, my eyelids can be a bit puffier and sometimes in order to get it looking like the same shape both sides you actually have to do slightly different shapes on both eyes uh, and it's difficult to see that if you've already piled other colours on top. Just my my little mumbling thoughts on the matter. Right, I'm going to go into take a sip, which although it's a matte, it has got, I don't know if you can see, it has got very fine mica in the actual pan. So I'm going to use that nice bright pinky red. And I'm going to 
I use that to build the colour up here. It's weird, against that first one it looks more coral. That's interesting. Right, so, three continents, one palette. Who are we? What do we do? Well, this was actually started by the lovely Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 and she put a thing up saying she wanted to do a series using the Colourpop nine pan monochromatic palettes was anybody interested in collabing in with her and doing that series uh, and both myself and Laura from Goldstar Work said, yeah, we've got quite a few of those, we love that idea, count us in. So, and then we were trying to decide what to call ourselves. And I'm like, well, Nona, you're in America, I'm in Europe. And, because uh, I'm in the UK. Because although we're coming out of the European Union, technically we're still on the European continent. Um, and Laura is in New Zealand. So, why don't we call it Three Continents, One Palette? Or 3C1P, for sure. And the girls seem to like that idea, and that's how Three Continents, One Palette was born. It's, it's all about how makeup is bringing the world together and making it, I don't know, a happier place, a nicer place. We, we wanted to try and show that because it was around about the time of one of the drama games, I can't even remember which one when we started now to be honest. Um, it was around about the time one of those was going off and you know the larger beauty channels were showing their dirty laundry in public and we just wanted to show that you know the smaller beauty channels are not like that. If you're interested in the makeup, the application of the makeup, what we actually think of palettes, because most of us in the smaller beauty community don't get any kind of PR. Um, so we've, we, you know, most things we've bought with our own money or have been birthday or Christmas gifts from friends and family. So, you know, when we give you an opinion on something, we give you an honest opinion. It's not tainted by, brand sent me this, if I don't say something nice, they may not send me anything else, you know? Which means you get sometimes brutally honest opinions. You certainly do from me. If I don't like something, you'll know about it. Um, I've always been a terrible liar. I've never been able to keep things from people. So if I don't like something, if I tell you I like it, you'll be able to tell straight away that I don't. <laughs> It really is that obvious. Right, I'm, I've just cleaned that brush and I'm going to go in for a smaller one now. More tapered blending brush. And I'm going to go into Shake It Up, which is the deepest of the five shades that I've got. And I'm going to pop this through the crease because if you've moved your crease, this is the point that you follow where you've moved your crease to because dark colours go back, light colours come forward. I'm only going to go about two thirds of the way along. Um, so by adding this deeper shade literally just through your crease or wherever you've moved your new crease to, it'll help continue the illusion that your crease is where you've placed it because it will look as if the eye has gone further back at that point. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on the outer corner like so. I might pop a little bit on the inner corner actually. I haven't done a halo eye for a while. I can't see a damn thing right now. Oh, look at that, perfect. So I will actually continue along the rest of the 
a crease now, I've decided to make it a halo eye. With this eye, because of the deep creasing that I have here, I do have to stretch the lid out a bit when I get to that point. Um, I don't advise you doing that at all because it will stretch your lid out and it will give you the issue that I'm having right now. But if I don't do it, unfortunately what happens is the pigment builds up in the crease, but it builds up loosely and then ends up getting in my eye and flaking down my face during the day. So not only is it painful when it gets in my eye, it also doesn't look very good and ruins your makeup look through the day. So I'm just going through my crease like I did before. I'm just deepening that up. And popping a little bit on the outer edge of my mobile lid, you see. I might, if I've got time, because I do have to go out today. I'm starting this later than usual because it took a while for my pain pills to kick in today. If I've got time at the end of this, I may do um, a bit of an editorial graphic liner on it. But I'll show you a, you know, normal makeup look first. I like that. So, Nona, Laura and myself. Nona is the sweetest woman you could ever wish to meet. She, I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody ever. Okay, flat top brush. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but I will be wetting it afterwards with this. You can use anything you like. MAC Fix Plus, Marie Badescu, which are moisturising sprays. Priming sprays, setting sprays, finishing sprays, you can even just save and empty one of those and fill it up with fresh water each time. But I'm going to go into Delish and pop it into the centre of each mobile lid. So yeah, N Nona is just, she's so supportive of everybody. She always, um, I don't know how the woman finds the time, but she always comments on your films. Um, which I will admit is something that I'm bad at doing because I normally float it to the TV and of course I can't actually comment on my TV so I'm really terrible if I float it to the TV I can like but I can't hit comments which I have started to watch it more on my phone but there are times when if I'm editing photos or something or answering emails I do that on my phone rather than my laptop because I've got more editing software on my phone than I have on my laptop but Nona bless her heart comments on everything and even if you don't like the look you've done she will find something positive to say about it. Right, so I've applied that in like a block, but what I'm going to do now is use the very tip of the bristles just to feather the edge into the mat so that it's a little bit less harsh. I just want it to blend in more. The edges there. Yeah, so Nona is, she's just such a lovely woman, she really is. And Laura is my Titania Queen of the Fairies. Um, I absolutely love her voice. I, 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 was, I was reading Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, for fun. I don't read many Shakespeare things for fun, but that's one of, the, one of his comedies that I do like. Tragedies are a bit hard going, but I like the comedies. And uh, I suddenly realised that when I was 
hearing Titania in my head. She sounded like Laura. I'm like, oh. I said, then Laura is clearly my Titania, Queen of the Fairies. So I told her that and uh, she found that quite funny. I think she quite liked it. And she too, she's actually an artist. Um, as in, not just makeup, she paints. And I've learned so much from her. I mean, I had quite a good grasp of colour theory and blending of colours anyway, because I'd worked for a print company. So, as well as the standard, you know, red and yellow make orange, etc. Um, we we'd done like four colour printing so like you know cyan and magenta together create this colour and magenta and green together make this colour kind of thing so I had a good grounding in colour theory but um, it was thanks to her, I say this every time but it's thanks to her that I actually learned how to uh, blend yellow and purple together effectively without it going muddy because she did a tutorial shortly after the Aha Honey palette came out. She did a tutorial on how to um, deepen and darken and blend other colours other than just sort of brown, orange and green, which is what most people were, were blending it with. Just tidying up the edges with a little bit of micellar water on a cotton pad. I don't like using tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment getting underneath it, it's going to pull your skin when you take it off. Right, my beauties, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products and stuff on, and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, for me, there's going to be a bit of a delay. But for you, my darlings, after this wibbly bit, it will be absolutely bloody instant. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hello, my lovelies, I am back. Uh, I used the Shake It Up shade that I put through my crease as my brow colour. Sorry, I was sitting on my top and wondered why I couldn't move properly. Right, flat top brush, the only shade so far that I've not used out of my five is my milkshake, so I'm going to use that on the lower lash line. And I'm going to just do either end I think. I haven't done this for a while either. But I'm going to be doing some graphic liner afterwards. Then I might as well do something completely different, darling. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Love this. Flat topped and chunky, but you can use any smudger brush or, you know, thick, dense, um, but quite short bristled blending brush. I'm just going to go back into Paper Straw, which is the lightest shade that I used, just to buff either edge, just to soften it a little. And yes, I've poked myself in the eye many times doing this. If you go a bit low like I have there, don't worry about it. You can either sort it out with a little bit of concealer later, or you can rock it and tell the world that's exactly how far I wanted to smudge it. Right, I'm going to go back into Delish 
which is this shade that I used here. I shall put a wet that because uh, might help prevent some fallout. I'm just going to pop that in the middle of my lower lash line to mimic the halo eye above. I always spray um, shimmers regardless of brand. It just helps to prevent some fallout and it can actually make them appear a bit brighter. It's not foiling them though. Foiling them means mixing them to a paste or a liquid with a mixing medium. This is just applying them wet. That's pretty. Right, dry my little brush off. This is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. And I'm going to go into my Smashbox hood, which how beautiful is that? Optimistic. It's actually white with a pink shift, pinky purple shift. So I think it will go quite nicely with this look. I was tempted to buy this by Soraya, who is uh, 90's love child on YouTube. And just pop some of that up under our brows, the tail end. Because apparently, loves, uh, our brows are subject to gravity, the same way other parts of our bodies are. Ain't that nice? a little bit of this on the inner corner and just bring it down to meet the pink that I've put underneath the eye. Right my beauties, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to pop some of this highlighter on my cheekbones. I will um, put some mascara and some lipstick on and I will be back with the finished look and then if I have time after I've filmed the intro because I'm going to film the intro with this look rather than with the graphic liner if I have time before I go out I'll have a play with some graphic liner and then pop back on at the end and show you that bit once again instant for you Hello my lovelies, I am back. So I chucked that highlighter on the top points of my cheeks. Very nice, very nice. Uh, used my Essence uh, Lash Princess with the orange top. Lippy is the uh, Revolution... One of their knockoff Charlotte Tilbury's in shade Greatest. I'm not sure they still do this one, but I did buy a backup because I liked it so much. Um, this for me is my lips, but better. So, just felt like popping this one on because I haven't worn it for a while. And setting spray is the um, the orange Dreamsicle Gerard spray. So. This is my final look using two rows of Strawberry Shake. If you're a regular viewer, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, constructive criticism is welcome, rudeness however will be met with sarcasm. Um, and it would be lovely if you could share this as well. It does help with the algorithm and getting this pushed out because YouTube are just terrible. Uh, once you've done that, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still deleting people. Um, they seem to have stopped sending emails, but one thing I did notice is all of my notifications got knocked back to personalised. It might be worth double checking yours as well and making sure it says all notifications not personalised so that if they do decide to change their mind again and start sending emails then you might actually get sent an email 
Um, if you're here from Nona or Laura's channel, or you tripped over me by accident somehow, hi, hello, welcome, glad you're here. Um, it'd be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are by far the nicest family in YouTube. Super easy, hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey, ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that you'll get notified when I put a new film up. Speaking of new films, I've got an awful lot of others to choose from. There's all the preceding episodes of uh, Three Continents, One Palette for a start. There's other collabs, there's challenges, tutorials product reviews, um, tags, I even read you my favourite poem. So, if you're looking for some me time, as I've said for some considerable time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and enjoy. If you are one of my current 4F babies, I'm going to need you to go across to Nona and to Laura and check out their films. Please give them a like, give them a comment. If you're not already subscribed to them, why? They're fantastic. You're missing out on some awesome films. And just basically be as nice to them as you are to me. Right, my lovelies. As ever, all that remains for me to say, thanks Bridget, is your stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Right my lovelies, I've got no idea if this will work or not. Um, I picked up, I'm, I'm waiting for some split pans, split pan liners from um, a local or a UK indie company but in the meantime I picked up the Suva Doodle Hydroliner. Right, as I've said I've got absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out and whether it's going to look bloody awful but split liner. I have got a, this is my uh, spot concealer, my Royal and Langlickle Chic Pro brush, but I want, oh, I think that might be a little bit too wide, you know. Uh, what have I got over here? Let's give this a go. This is one of the uh, Vulva Morphe lip brushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt some, well, I'm going to use this setting spray, into the lid, dip the brush in and then use that to activate the hydro liner. As I said, genuinely no idea how this will turn out. So, wet the brush, wish me luck. And I'm just going to wipe down between the two. <sighs> Wish me luck. Shabby, not too shabby. And of course that one has to come out brighter, doesn't it? Let's see if 
hope I can do anything to So far, so good. Now I'm going to grab one of my artist brushes. And I'm going to go into the white section first. I much prefer using artist brushes for this than makeup brushes because you can get them so much finer. I'm just going to tidy up the edge of that line just there and my lid creased. something twirly at the end because oh, why not I'm having a play this is part of the fun of makeup This is fun. Yeah, as I said, I've got a couple of um Glisten Cosmetics are doing their version of Spirit Liners. They've actually been working on it before Super Bowl wears out. And they were like, oh great, people are now going to think we've copied Super. But considering how long it takes to develop things, the fact that they're coming out this close to Suva releasing this one. Pretty obvious they've been working on it for quite a while. I can't tell you what fun I'm having right now. And on this side, just tidy up the edge of the white. And of course this time, I put the white on the bottom deliberately. The whole point of this is just to do whatever you feel like really. 
iPad as much or as, I mean you could just stop at just that graphic swoosh if you wanted. But I felt like adding a wee bit more than just that, you know. Right, because I've got white mixed in with that liquid now. I'm going to soak all that liquid up and clean the brush obviously because I want the black to be black not grey. But that's one of the things that I like about this particular type of thing that's going on with the split liners. You effectively, you aren't just getting two colours, you're getting a myriad because you can then mix the two colours together in varying quantities. So I can create varying shades, of, I, could, I could do 50 shades of grey. Steady. It's not that kind of channel. So I shall now go into the black and have a play with that particular side. The only problem and I say problem with doing graphic liner like this is it can show up uh, should we say creases and crinkles in the fabric of our face but You go slowly enough, you can actually get it, so it's not as noticeable. See, I don't want the same thing both sides, I want something a little bit different. And I just think that this just a little bit of fun. Obviously I'm not expecting you to do this if you recreate this look but should you wish to you've at least got a few ideas maybe. And of course you can always tidy up any edges that are perhaps not as crisp as you would like them to be. God knows what my husband's going to say when he sees this. They're going food shopping as well. <laughs> Mind you, to be fair, since the whole corona thing, he won't let me go in the supermarket. like no you can drive us there and you can give me a list and I will go in 
It makes sense because obviously it's a lot quicker when he goes in without me. So obviously I have to keep stopping and you know leaning on the trolley and stuff because I refuse to do a bloody Amberlynn read and use one of those trolleys. I mean I've got a wheelchair when we're doing longer journeys and things. Like when, you know, when we go and do Christmas shopping and stuff. But I'm not going to use one of those when I'm at a supermarket. So, it's a lot quicker when he goes in by himself. So there's less exposure time and less, less risk that way. Um, bless him. Ever since I had that pneumonia three years ago and uh, nearly carked it, he has been so protective of me, love him. Um, you know, he when he comes in from work, before he even comes into the house, he takes his boots off, sprays them with disinfectant that we've got at the front door. And then, um, comes through and, and then sprays disinfectant on everything that he's touched since coming in, door handles, light switches, etc. because he's determined that he's not going to let me get sick. Love his heart. Right, so this is the Suva one in Doodle. Obviously it's a lot more expensive than Glisten Cosmetics is. Can't wait for those to arrive. And down here. No, that one's not open yet. I should have one up here that's open. This is one of those double-ended liners that has a stamp at the other end of it. And I just think it's a cute way to finish off. you may have drawn. Right, let's zoom you back out and give you a look at this. So as I said, you know, maybe not necessarily what you're going to want to wander around Tesco's or Walmart or whatever your shop of choice may be. But, I think that's quite cute. I always have loved sort of random squiggles and things. I often think I'd like a facial tattoo, but I'm never quite brave enough. Because I just think, oh, well then by the time you put foundation on over the top of it, people aren't really going to see the beauty of it. So, there is my look with little bit of graphic liner. Who knew? Right, this time 